Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at a John Lee Hooker style rhythm. And uh, it's a lot of fun to do. It's, it's fun to play by yourself with no accompaniment. And it's also fun to play with a band. So if you're new to this style of shuffle playing, you're definitely going to want to check this out. Uh, I'm going to break it down in detail over the next half hour or so. So everything you heard in the intro, I'll show you how to play it. Um, if you want to download the tablature and jam track for this, you can do so at ActiveMelody.com. Just look for EP032. That's the lesson number for this lesson. I've got two versions of the jam track as well. So I've got the tempo that I played in the intro, but I've also got a slower version. So uh, if you're new to this style of shuffle playing, you definitely want to check out that slower version. It'll make it a little easier for you. But uh, anyway, let's break it down. Let's break down the lesson. All right, so as you can tell, I'm uh, playing this on an electric guitar, obviously. But if you've only got an acoustic guitar and you want to learn to do this, you can do this on an acoustic as well. So this will work either way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play through everything uh, uh, by myself with no accompaniment. I like to do that just so you have a reference, a video reference of that. Uh, and then I'll, I'll we'll, we'll break it down and show you how to play everything note for note. Uh, I'm going to play it a little slower than I did in the intro as well. So here we go. And then it just repeats from there. Okay, so now before I show you, uh, by the way, if you haven't downloaded the jam track for this one, I do have two versions of the jam track. So there's a slower version and the faster version. And you're going to definitely want the, if you've ever needed a jam track for a lesson, this is the one because uh, to get the timing on this, it's really critical to have to have that to, to practice with. So, um, okay, so now... Um, before I show you the notes, I want to talk about the timing really quick. Um, most rock music or blues music is in 4-4 four, four time, and by 4-4 four, four, I mean there's four beats to a measure. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Uh, however, there's something that happens um, it's, it, when you're playing a shuffle style. There's these and notes. Well, the and notes are always there, but you're accenting those and notes. And an and note is, it goes like this. One, and two, and three, and four. And those are the notes in between the one, two, three, four. So those are called and notes. Um, and um, that's how I, what I refer to them as anyway. So it's you're wanting to, to accent those and notes. And you do that with an upstroke with the right hand. So it's... <laughs> You can hear if you were to count that verbally, it would sound like this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So every time I say and, that's the accent that I'm playing to create that, um, you know, that, that, uh, that sound. Now the other thing that's happening is uh, on the one, two, three, four part, I'm playing a muted, uh, really a muted downstroke. So it's a combination of that muted downstroke and the upstroke that give you that that nice shuffle sound. So um, so let's not worry about the left hand. And the, as we just break this down, let's get the right hand down first. The right hand is going to be uh, well. It's kind of a combination of the two hands that create that sound. But we'll start with the right hand, and then I'll show you what the left hand is doing. So uh, what? Let me just explain it first. If you'll notice what's happening, as I mentioned, uh, I'm doing an upstroke um, on the and note, and then I'm coming down, and as I come down, I rest my finger, my hand on the strings, and as I do that, I s strum at the same time, and you create kind of a, a muted um, downstroke like that. So if I were to mute the whole thing, it would sound like this. So you can see it's it's you know as I hit, hit, hit go down for the downstroke I I mute the strings with my my right hand. 
So that's happening. Now, in addition to that, uh, and this is this is kind of a a weird thing in the beginning, but you'll get it, and it'll happen. Actually, you'll you'll be able to do this pretty pretty easily once you once you get the hang of this one t part of it. Um, and that's so the left hand. I'm going to just make an E chord down here, and notice what happens. I'm pushing down. I'm fretting the notes to make the chord, and then I release here with the left hand, but I keep my fingers in position. But, but the reason I'm releasing is because I get this effect. You can see when I'm pushing down versus releasing. So it's a combination then. Let me do this really slowly and you'll start to visually see it. See how every time I do an upstroke with my right hand, my left hand pushes down to fret the notes. And then when my right hand comes down to do the downstroke, my left hand is just sitting on top of the strings to keep them keep it muted. So it's really a combination of muting there and then when my hand goes down here, you know, there's just it's totally dead so that all I get is a is a strum sound, but that cre creates part of that rhythm. So So what you can see then both hands are working at the same time and it looks like this. So as I'm doing an upstroke with my right hand, my left hand is fretting the notes. And then as I'm doing a downstroke with my right hand, my left hand is sitting rested on the strings. So it's... So hopefully you get that concept. I know this kind of kind of weird, uh, and this may be something you want to watch a few times, but just that's the... Before you move on to the lesson and start trying to play the whole thing, you have to get that concept first. Um, and here it is slowly. Listen to all the parts, not just the, 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 the notes that are ringing out, but the mute as well. Okay, so there, I mean, I've beat that point up, but I wanted to start with that because that's important. Now. The first thing that happens with the left hand is an E chord, and an E chord is pretty basic. Um, it's a middle middle finger down on the second fret fifth string, uh, ring finger down on the second fret fourth string, and pointer finger down on the first fret third string. And with an E chord, obviously, you can play all six strings. And now, when I start this thing, I start with a down stroke, and then I go right into the shuffle. Just like that. Let me do it slowly. So again, you don't want to move on uh, until you get this, because honestly, most of this, what happens with the left hand is actually pretty easy. There's not anything super challenging with the left hand. The challenge is, you know, all with that right hand, just getting that drive and that groove going. You can use this effect, by the way, in a lot. You'll hear this in lots of songs. So it's you'll hear John Lee Hooker doing it. Um, uh, you'll hear uh, like songs like a Lagrange by ZZ Top. You know they, they get that's that's what creates that sound that and playing on the and beat or that shuffle sound. It's d the same same technique that I'm using here for those songs. So um, so again, if you do have the jam track, um, you'll probably want to. I've got two you know the two versions. You'll want to start with that slower version just to try and get the groove going. You know so that you've got got everything sort of happening in sync. And at first it's going to feel like riding a bike and it's going to be all kind of wobbly, but all of a sudden it's just going to kick in and you'll be able to do it. So so after the E part, I do three of those. I do one, two, three, then I come up and do... Now, uh, so what happens there with the left hand is I switch to, I put my pointer finger down on the second fret, second string, my middle finger down on the third fret third string and I'm going to do an upstroke and I'm going to play the top three strings and as soon as I do the upstroke I slide this uh, I slide it this way uh, everything one fret uh, so just like that now what's happening from a timing perspective when I do my upstroke with the right hand 
this is where I, I change, I don't change the rhythm, but I don't do the downstroke in that place because w what I substitute that downstroke with is sliding this into place. So you'll hear it. So as soon as that goes into place, then I go right back into the shuffle. So that's what I'm trying to do, really. Let me slow it down. Notice the right hand, it pulls up and it stops and it waits, and then it jumps back in. That's the wait, right here. That's the wait I'm talking about. Okay, so together those two parts. So then I come down and I play this little part. And what I'm doing for that, um, it's actually pretty easy to do. I'm just I'm starting here by putting down my middle finger on the second fret third string. And notice my my pointer finger goes down on the first fret third string right behind it. And the reason that that happens is the first thing that I do is a pull off. So I'm actually as soon as I pick that third string, I'm going to go ahead and let this finger come off and do a pull off and you kind of flick the string when you pull it off that's what gives it the 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 note and as soon as I do that then what I do is I just take both fingers and I put them down right back into on on the uh, second fret so the ring finger goes down on the fourth string and the middle finger goes down on the fifth string both on the second fret keeping my pointer finger in place the whole time and notice what I did. I just created the E chord again. So now we're back in position to to, to loop it. So to get if I do it real slowly, it sounds like this. So notice when I oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention. So after the pull off, when I do the hammer on, I'm actually hammering on with my ring finger onto the fourth string second fret. That's the note that I'm playing, although both fingers go down because I'm back in position for the E chord. So it's like this. So I'm only picking that once, notice, for those three notes. Picking the first one, and I'm doing a pull off on the second one and doing a hammer on, on the third one. Now after that, then, you know, that gives your right hand time to come up here and grab the the low E string or the sixth string again, which starts the starts the whole shuffle again. And now you've got a little groove. And I wouldn't go any farther. I would just get that down first before you try and tackle the other parts. So now we go to the A part, the A seventh part of the song and so when I'm when I do that I, I go in like this and for that I'm doing an upstroke on the third string just an open third string by the way I take my middle finger and come over here to the third fret sixth string and play that note and then I come back and play the third the open third string so it sounds like this well, that's the first thing. And then we, after that, I play the A chord. And by that, I just bar the first four strings on the second fret. And I play strings five, four, and three. And maybe two. But that's an, the, the A chord. That's how I, I, I start the A chord. So it's it, all together slowly, it sounds like this. And um, one other thing I should mention, when I play the sixth string on the third fret, I give it a little bit of a bend. Uh, if you don't have time to do that, if, uh, if you're feeling rushed to try and keep up with the jam track, that's okay, you can leave that out. But it, I think giving a little bend gives it a little twang, which is kind of a nice effect. So then I go ahead and play the A seventh part like this. And what I do for that is I just leave my bar down, and I take my I do this with my uh, ring finger. You may some of you may want to do this with your middle finger, but just push down on the third fret first string, and 
that's how I'm playing it. It's really kind of like hitting that, um, you know, that bottom, um, or strings 5, 4, and 3, as I mentioned. And then I come up here and play the top part of that chord, which is this. And I kind of do a down stroke, and then I do an up stroke to accent that seventh note. Let me do that slowly. Alright, so now let me back up and play everything up to that point. I'm just going to play through the E part two times instead of four. So here we go. So that's where we're up to. Now after that, then I play... actually pretty easy to do. Um, all I'm doing is I'm taking my middle finger and I'm coming to the third fret fifth, fifth string to play that note. Then I take my ring finger and come up to the fourth fret fifth string. So we have those two notes. Then I take my pointer finger and come to the fourth string on the second fret. And I play that twice, so we have... Here it is slower. So it's down, up. Now we're going to play... Where I'm going to take my ring finger down on the 4th fret, 4th string, and play that note twice. So... Let me do that a little slower. What I just did there was I grabbed, um, and I kind of this this part's a little sloppy when I play it, but it's somewhat intentional. So I play that fourth string, fourth fret, but it's actually okay to start grabbing the open third string at this point because what we're going to do is we're going to slide this, uh, we're going to slide this fourth fret, fourth string up to the fifth fret, fourth string. But while I do that, I'm actually playing two notes. I'm playing playing the fourth string and the third string, and it creates kind of a weird um, kind of a clash. But I think it sounds pretty cool. Hear it? If you play it slowly, it sounds terrible. But um, but in context, it, or if you're playing it up to tempo, it, or especially with a jam track, it actually kind of works. So after that, so all I'm doing is just going one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Then I just go back to the uh, second fret, uh, fourth string. And then I'm just, and after that, I play the fifth, the open fifth string again. And then complete the A seventh chord again. So let me back up and play just the A seventh part. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now after that, to get back to the E, I did this thing and went... Pretty easy to do. Just take my ring finger, start on the third fret, first string. Now slide up to the fifth fret, first string. Then I come down and play that note again, but this time I'm playing it or play the third fret first string, but this time I'm playing it with my pointer finger. And then I come down to the fifth fret second string. Then the third fret second string. So we have... Notice the right hand is just down, up, down, up. Then I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to come to the fourth fret third string. And as soon as I play this note, I'm going to slide down two frets down to the second fret, third string. Just like that. 
Then I'm going to take my fingers off the fretboard and play the open third string. Then I'm going to come down to the second fret fourth string. Then the open fourth string. So slowly it sounds like this. And notice I, yeah, notice with the right hand, it is just alternate picking. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, what happens there, you just hit that note, all hands are off the fretboard, and now we're back in position to go right back to the E. So all that did was, by playing those open notes, it gave, gave you enough of a breather to be able to take your hand and reposition it back to the E. All right, so let me go ahead and back up. I'll play everything to that point, only playing the E part twice to save time. So then we come to the B seventh chord. It's actually a B seventh sharp nine because I'm adding my pinky up here. But we'll get to that in a second. So first thing that happens is this little walk up. So I'm starting with the fifth string, the open fifth string, which is an A. Then I take my pointer finger on the first fret fifth string. Then I take my middle finger on the second fret fifth string. It's important to use your middle finger for that because that'll that's. Uh, because now we're going to play the chord, and you're right in position for that. So after that, then I'm going to take my pointer finger, push it down on the first fret, uh, fourth string, and my middle f or my ring finger goes down on the second fret, third string, and then my pinky goes down on the third fret, second string, to create that sound. Now that's kind of a funky sounding chord. It's really just a B seventh chord, but you're adding that you know that pinky note uh, to create kind of a jazzy sound, and I I, th I think it sounds pretty cool. Uh, you don't have to do that; you could just play the B seventh. But um, so that's really what I'm doing for that part. I'm just walking up to it and then playing the chord. And then I come up here and I play B seventh really high in the neck and go. And that's kind of a Jimi Hendrix Red House thing. Um, obviously, that Red House is playing a different key, but uh, but that's the same. It's the same shape. I'm just doing it higher on the neck. So what I'm doing there is I'm taking really that same shape. When you think of the B seventh here, uh, I always. Uh, it's also the same as a D seventh if you're playing D seventh in, in in first position taking that same shape and you're putting it up here so that your middle finger and your ring finger are on the 11th fret strings one and three see how they're straddling those two strings and then I take my pointer finger and I push put that down on the 10th fret second string and I'm playing those top three strings to, to get that sound so together those two parts are and when I play it I I shake them a little bit and give a little vibrato uh, that's how I did it. And so I kind of slid up to it to give it, uh, instead of just playing it straight. Although you could do it that way, either way. But I think it has kind of a cool sound to try and slide into that position. So it's actually not that hard to do because your fingers are already in that shape. You're just kind of repositioning that shape up to here. Then after that, I just played a straight A7. And that's that chord again. It's just barring the first four strings on the second fret and pushing down. I use my ring finger for this third fret, first string. I'm playing strings five, four, three, two, and one. And I started by just playing the A, the low five, the low fifth string. Just like that. So together those two parts are.
And then I play this little um, little run that goes. And for that, um, I'm going to take my ring finger and come to the 10th fret first string. And then I'll go ahead and, while that's down, I go ahead and put my pointer finger down in position here on the 7th fret first string so that I can remove that 10th fret first string. And that finger's already in, in, in place, so it's like this. Then I come down to the 2nd string on the 10th fret. And then the final note is played on the uh, eighth fret second string. And when I play it, I give it a pretty good amount of vibrato. And I push it a little slightly sharp when I do it. You can hear it kind of going up there. And I think I just as a slur note or you know a note to get back, I took my middle finger and put it down on the. Um, ninth fret third string and just slid down so I can be back in position so it's that part is really just there on the ninth fret third string and you you could do that or not do it it works either way all right so let me back up I'll play uh, everything up to that Why point so? so here we go just repeats it goes right back into it well hopefully you've enjoyed this John Lee Hooker style shuffle lesson and you can apply this to your own playing um, uh, make sure you like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash actimelody if you want to stay in touch and know when new lessons come out or you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash actimelody or you can join our community over at actimelody.com there's a free version of the community if you just want to join and interact with us on the forums and leave comments and all that good stuff. So anyway, we'll see you in the next lesson.